Hey guys, how's it going? It's Dylan right again and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you for joining the channel. I really appreciate your time. And today I'm pretty excited because I'm actually gonna cover Magic Leap key bindings with the Magic Leap remote. I had a lot of questions about how to do that, how they can actually emulate the controller while working in Unity. So this is what I'm gonna show you in this video, how we can create action bindings that will map your keyboard or your mouse to basically to the remote so that that information can get passed into Unity. All right, guys, so let me show you what I do to test my game when it comes to using the remote controller and basically emulating some of the events that the controller will send. So the first thing that I that I normally do is I open up the Magic Leap remote and I'm going to show you how you can map your own keys in your keyboard to what the Magic Leap remote provides. So then just click on a start simulator. The, the other thing before you do this, you want to make sure that you have Lumine OpenGL on the toolbar in Unity. If you don't have that, that means that you didn't sel select the right graphics option. So if you go to Build Settings, so go to File, Build Settings, then go to Player Settings. So if you go to the Player Settings and then look at the Magic Leap basically player and make sure that you have OpenGL Core as the first option. If that doesn't do it for you, also go in and click on this down arrow and then make sure that you uncheck the auto graphics for Mac or auto graphics for Windows, depending on the operating system that you're running. Once you do that, you're going to get the option and then just go ahead and select the, you know, drag in and drop the OpenGL as the first option and the same thing on the, on the Lumin. So once you've done that, it's going to ask you to restart the Unity editor, just go ahead and restart it. Then the other thing that I did, I went to Magic Leap and I click on the import. There's an import support libraries. Make sure that you do that. And that's going to import everything that it needs in order for you to connect to the Magic Leap remote. So once that is ready to go, you just have to hit play and that will connect to the Magic Leap remote. Assuming that you already started the simulator, just like I did. So once you have that going, you can just basically minimize the Magic Leap simulator and we can basically focus on this. So on the Magic Leap remote, you have a lot of different options. And the one that I've been that I want to do for this video is looking at the action, what they call the action bindings. And these are bindings that you can set up so that you can basically bind an action either on your mouse, on your keyboard to what what basically the game is sending in real in real life if you were actually running this on the device so you can you can emulate a lot of different things you can emulate the head and if you expand every single one of these options we can emulate you know changing changing the head the head to you know let maybe moving your head to left to right and if you wanted to emulate that you can basically just bind this to something on your one of the keys on your keyboard looks at right now they have predefined options for you selected so left and right they have q and e ws for out and in so you can emulate the head pretty easily by by basically binding some of those the so if i collapse that option now the one that i that i've been doing that i've been dealing with is the controller because my game has some actions that i need to execute with the controller for instance i'm um, I'm basically placing the structures in my game around the area that I'm that I'm on. So if I want to place a structure maybe on top of a chair, I want to make sure that that's working. So to emulate that, I need to emulate the position of where I want to place those structures. So what I did on the left and right, I went in and click on the left and right, and and I added a binding. By adding that binding, it allows me to select, you know, what actual key on my keyboard, I can select to emulate the left, basically the left action on the control or the right action on the control. So for the le left action, I did the letter D and for the, basically for the other action, actually that was for the right action. For the left action, I'm using the A on my keyboard and they also have the sensitivity, which is really helpful, which goes, I believe from one, two, three, yep. And I have mine set to one, you know, it depends on, on what you're trying to do. If you set the sensitivity pretty high up, every keystroke, every time you press on a key, it's basically going to move that pretty, pretty, you know, in a, it's going to go faster as you, as you're hitting the key. So if you want to make it slower, that means the sensitivity, it's going to be much lower. So one to me works fine. So that's what I did on the right and left. 
position on the controller. Then the down and up, I did S and W. So I'm basically using the AW SDX basically to move around. And that's what I'm doing on, you know, on the left and right, down and up. I also incremented the sensitivity on the down and up. I wanted to move a little faster in that, you know, in that regard. Then coming basically out and in, this is, you know, how far the controller is in the view and then how close it is. So on that one, I did E and R. Then I also changed, you know, the rotation, then the pitch. So what I want to show you, let's go ahead and change some of these so that you can see how they react to the game. So if I go ahead and let's just resize the game, I'm going to dock the, the game on the, basically on that panel. And then we're going to go into the scene view. It's going to hit play. And I want to show you how the game is going to react. For instance, how the controller is going to react to anything that I'm doing on the on the remote. The the other thing that I'm going to do once it gets connected, I need to also select the the room that I want to that I want to emulate. So I'm actually going to do it now. Let's go ahead and do it now and wait until wait until this connects. It normally it goes fast. I think I, I I got to a point where I really need to restart the operating system. It's been taking longer than normal. But it normally you just hit play and it connects. So let's just wait for a minute. So another thing to mention while that is running, if you if you're basically dragging, you can drag around by by holding your left mouse click. And you can see how I can look around the area, I can look up, I can look down, and it looks like it's already connected. So one thing to know is as I'm moving around, because I have the I have a component in here that is called the ML spatial mapper. And that is doing a mapping on the of the entire area. So as I'm moving around, it's actually creating a mesh of every object that it finds around the room. So you can see I have a mesh of the couches, I have a mesh of the map, also the table and the lamp. And that is helpful because if you want to place an object that is basically maybe maybe above the couch, it needs to be basically the game needs to be aware of all the objects so that it knows the position of where to place them. So if I go down here in and, and, and you look at my view right here, you can see that I have two different controls. So if I hold the if I do W, you can see that that went up pretty pretty fast. And in fact you can kind of see it if I zoom in, in here. You can see how that is moving the control up and down. So I can also do so if you remember I did A and D for left and right. So if I did A and D and you can see that the sensitivity is on the up and down is much higher and that's because that one was set to two where the the d was set to one and i think i'm going to go ahead and, and change the sensitivity on the up and down let's say let's go ahead and do that so if i go down to my action bindings and look at how we have let's go ahead and change it to 0.5 and see and see what happens change it to 0.5 on both on up and down so you don't need to save anything in here, it automatically saves for you, you just need to close the window. So now if I do up and down, you can kind of see, so this is really helpful when, when you're like in close proximity. And, and now, now it feels more natural, like, you know, if I'm, if I'm moving up and down. In fact, if I do left and right, we do the exact same thing. I think 0.5 is better than, than 1 in this instance. So if I go down and look at the control 0, and we change this to 0.5, also change this one to 0.5 and we can now close out of here so now you can see you know if i'm if I, that i'm moving the control around you can kind of see that i'm also so if i use the other letters i have like l you can see how that one is mapping differently so that one is for the i believe that's basically tilting the controller we can go we can go ahead and see what i did there some of these ones i don't know on the top of my head because i just been learning learning about learning about this so that one is for the pitch for the yeah rotation is g and f so if we go ahead and and do g you can kind of see how that one is rotating as well and that one has a a much lower prox uh, uh, sensitivity so you can kind of see that that one it's you know it's taking longer for it to rotate so we can now look at the game so if we go into the scene view and let me show you one thing that is really cool here so you can kind of see that object right there. That's what I call the what, what Magic Leap calls the cursor. So if we go back to the Magic Leap remote, 
and I go up and down, that is also changing the position. So that's actually mimicking what the control will do with that object. So it already it detected a plane. And if we go, go ahead and get closer to it, and so it detected that this was a mesh, the floor is a mesh, and that's why it's kind of you know falling down and then and then it, get, it gets to a flat, and then the rotation of that object is changing. And I can go, you know, I can go closer, I can now rotate it. You can kind of see how that is changing. And if I wanted to get, let's say that I wanted to get on the top of that table, I could, you know, get closer and that object is is also changing, changing its position. So let's go ahead and go back to, so what if you wanted to, you know, if you had, if you had rotated the screen and you wanted to go back to the normal position, you can click on this and it will basically put you back into where you were. And then unfortunately for the controller, I haven't been able to find a way to do that. I always have to find where it is and then basically put it in place. Looks, looks like I know where it is now. And so one way that I done is I just basically close out of the, the remote and and reopen the magic Leap remote and then it'll have everything back to default but with the with the other one it'll basically reset the camera position so i can i can look around and if i get lost then i can just click in here and then that will basically get it get it back and reset it so that's basically all the all you can do you can also do so you can do control multiple controls you can also do the eyes if you wanted to control the eyes the hands are something that i'm going to be messing around with on the next video the reason for that is because i want to be able to control hand gestures and that's going to be one thing that i'm going to be covering on one of the upcoming videos so for now i think i'm gonna i'm gonna basically call these as done and i really wanted to show you how action bindings work and also make sure that you know if you wanted to save these settings you can also download the load and download these settings so if i wanted to you know save it Put it in a, in a location maybe i wanted to have it in source control you can also save these to somewhere in your computer maybe you put it in the same location where your repo repository is in source control you can also just like i did you know you can save it you can save us and you can also load an existing action binding and this might be helpful for things like if you wanted to have different configurations or you know, you may want to do the mouse for one thing and then you might want to use the keyboard for another thing. I don't know. There's a lot of different use cases that you could use to do that. So I'm going to wrap it up here and, and thank you for, for this video. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate your time. And if you have any questions, let me know through the comments. Also, don't forget to check out gamedev.net. They have amazing resources for game developers that are either starting or have advanced experience in the field also don't forget to check out my patreon which i'm using to fund this channel basically i'm going to be looking for getting a video editor and that video editor professional is going to help me in editing the future videos so patreon is going to help me with that so thank you very much for watching guys